Welcome back. Welcome back. You made Diamond K in here, of course. The Diamond K show. Um, so some on the other side of this debacle yesterday, uh, in the uh NFL, the Ravens game. And so so I'm gonna say this. I, I have this question about whether or not the NFL games are rigged, right? And so, so let me start by saying this. I watch pro wrestling. Obviously, I watch movies. Uh, those things are predetermined, right? Uh, the winners are already known uh, before the events take place. So the NFL, is the NFL like that? Is the National Football League predetermining what they want to happen in a game. I'm going to say sometimes. Sometimes. So when you have an instance like what we're experiencing with the Kansas City Chiefs right now. You have one of the star players, one of the big players who is dating a megastar, a celebrity, Taylor Swift. So you have the marriage of sports and music you have the marriage of entertainment because it's, it's all entertainment. You're all entertained by it. And the amount of non-sports related publicity that the NFL has been receiving, has been courting with the whole inclusion of Taylor Swift and um, Travis Kelsey. That's what I'm focusing on. So, you know, you got a production crew. And if you notice, they got a camera guy who was on Taylor Swift. That's just that's just his job. <laughs> you, camera number five, you're on Taylor Swift and, and, and all of her uh, team. So whenever something happens with the Chiefs, we're going to go to you, camera number five. And, and that's Taylor Swift's camera, right? Uh, because that's what it appears happens. How do you have this celebrity where the camera is always on her? The other football players are dating chicks, right? We don't know who they dating. We don't get to see the camera pointed on their ladies. Uh, and I'm sure that 
there are other NFL players who are dating celebrity ladies, right? We can run down a list of them. But you don't get no camera time on them, right? Because they, they're not as good for business as Taylor Swift is. So Taylor Swift, Travis Kelsey, let's, let's, let's go with the narrative. Before Taylor Swift and Travis Kelsey were dating to the public, before we knew that they were dating, People would say, oh, the, the the narrative was Kansas City is over. Kansas City is done, right? They want a downswing. And then this uh, couple surfaces. Now, now they're on a resurgence all of a sudden. Now they're, the, you know, they were saying that the team that uh, Patrick Mahomes had was, was the worst Kansas City team they could ever have. This was going to be the worst one he was going to have. Uh, but mysteriously, they have now found themselves in the Super Bowl. So let me say this, all right? The Ravens did not do any favors for themselves. They didn't play the best game they could play. Defense did their job. You know, Flowers made some mistakes. Lamar made some mistakes. Obviously, uh, uh, Harbaugh, who I said is 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 not a great coach, uh, out coached by Andy Reid. Of course, that, that used to be Andy Reid's young boy, right? Of course, he's not going to outcoach him, right? But, you know, all of that aside, mistakes aside, the the, the play calling aside, the refereeing, the officiating that took place here in Baltimore for that game was atrocious. You're only calling – you're only calling fouls on one of the teams. The other team, you don't call nothing on, right? Uh, there, there were some some calls that were missed by the referees that uh, were against Baltimore. Uh, well, I mean, against Kansas City, you know, inflicted upon Baltimore, and and referees just, you know, I don't know. It just seemed like the outcome of that game, the NFL wanted to see Kansas City make it. To the Super Bowl, right? That's the better story. You got Taylor Swift, mega star. They're gonna have the camera on her walking. They're gonna be catching her walking into uh, uh, the arena in Vegas the same way you see the the players, right? I I wouldn't be surprised. They're gonna be talking to her right before halftime. What, what do you think about Usher's show? You know, I just this is a spectacle, and the Ravens didn't fit the narrative. Now, here's what I'm saying. If Lamar and company played a better game yesterday, they were still going to lose because the NFL did not want the Ravens in the Super Bowl. Whether they were going to have to do whatever they were going to have to do. That, that's why the play calling was the way it was. The Ravens were favored. So they said, we got to get these officials. We need these officials to understand, right? It's just like pro wrestling. The referees that are in the ring in pro wrestling, usually if you pay attention, they have an earpiece. Somebody in the back is telling them what to do. Do this. Do that. Wrap this match up. Extend the match. We're going to have a run in. All this kind of stuff. The, the producers, the bookers, the people in the back are telling them what to do. And uh, we got the same type of thing. The uh, NFL refs, they got headsets too. Somebody's telling them what to do. Do this, do that. Is it we were gonna go to New York? Are we gonna go up top? Yeah, this is all a production. And sometimes we get wrapped up in it. And sometimes it's just an athletic contest, right? And sometimes when there's a lot of money on the line, look, you know, there's a lot of money on the line. A lot of people lost money yesterday. That's all part of this whole thing. It's all part of this whole thing. And uh, every now and now and then. Uh, I forget this is just entertainment. This is big business, but this is entertainment. This is entertainment. And and so uh, with regards to the Detroit Lions, they wanted Brock Purdy. The NFL wanted Brock Purdy because that's the story that they want to tell. So they went to Brock Purdy in the Super Bowl. Now, does that mean that the teams can screw themselves? Yeah. The Detroit Lions did a lot of things to make it easy for the narrative that the NFL wanted to be told. 
The Baltimore Ravens did a lot of things to make it easy to tell the narrative. But if they played the right game, the NFL was going to make sure that the narrative that they wanted to tell is what was told. Let me know your thoughts, of course, uh, in the comment section, Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, LinkedIn, TikTok, at the Diamond K Show. Uh, of course, uh, comment section or DJ Diamond K at gmail.com. So are you excited about the Super Bowl? I guess it depends on what team you're rooting for. I know a lot of people that were having Super Bowl parties. Maybe they still are. Uh, I am not as excited about the Super Bowl as I was. Maybe in a week or so, I will uh, get there. Uh, but I, I don't know. I, I, yesterday's game was very deflating. Very deflating. Um, but, uh, you know, I mean, maybe I'm, maybe I'm going to watch it. I, mean, I, I, I would like to think that I am. Uh, but we're going to see. Uh, of course, on uh, social media, I am at the Diamond K Show. Uh, so we posted this uh, on uh, Instagram, and uh, it says, th this is for water drinkers. Do you prefer drinking water that is cold or room temperature? Do you prefer drinking water that is cold or room temperature? Now, a lot of folks, strangely, don't like water. We we had a conversation on the No Filter podcast last week where the uh, guest was talking about how, you know, we, we were trying to convince him about water. He was just kept trying to say, ah, he didn't really like water like that. Uh, he didn't think that water was that big of a deal. Um, but uh, water is very important uh, to, uh, you know, any living thing. And, and, and for any... People that don't like to drink water, right? Here's what they say. Yo, you could drink too much water. What if you drink too much water? You, you could drown. You get all the kind of stuff. They got all these excuses of, uh, of why you shouldn't drink water. Uh, but do you prefer drinking water that is cold or do you like water that is room temperature? Um, so, I, you know, I'm mixed with this. Sometimes I like water that's cold. Summertime, I want, you know, ice cold water. Just depends. Sometimes I, room temperature water is fine. Obviously, but if you really want water, it doesn't make a difference. Uh, but I like both. I like both. I don't have a preference. You know, you go to some people's house, and they'll ask you, do you want something to drink? And you'll say, sure, sure. You, you want some water? Okay, yeah, you get some water. Yeah. Uh, it, it's, it's, you know, it's not a refrigerator. It's not cold. It's just room temperature. Yeah, yeah, I'm cool with that. No problem. It's no problem for me. Uh, some people have all of these theories, has to be cold, has to be uh, room temperature, um, but anxious to hear folks' thoughts. Folks that drink water, room temperature or cold water, what is your preference and why? What is your preference and why? Because, you know, everybody got a, a reason why they do the different things that they do. Um, a lot of things going on, as I said uh, on uh, all social media, I am at the Diamond K Show. All social media at the Diamond K Show. Uh, here's another thing from uh, our Instagram page. And this uh, coming out of Chi Town, Chicago, Illinois. Uh, Chicago, Illinois. Um, it is uh, an interesting uh observation i can't say that uh that i'm surprised what's going on uh uh on ig what up uh police misconduct by 141 officers over four years cost taxpayers 142.8 million dollars 142.8 million dollars uh this is what they call not chump change. So between 2019 and 2022, the taxpayers footed this large amount for lawsuits involving 141 police officers accused of multiple misconduct incidents. So we're not talking about one incident. We're not talking about two instances we are talking about multiple 
instances involving 141 police officers. Now, this is part of a larger $295 million that was spent over uh, 1,000 officers' misconduct cases. A lot of folks don't know that your, mine, our taxpayer dollars are spent on things that we probably wouldn't agree with. <laughs> Generally speaking, tax dollars spent on things that we would not agree with. Uh, and, and so this coming out, um, so 2019, 2020, 2021, 2022 taxpayers in Chicago having their money spent on uh, the payouts for multiple multiple officers cases so uh according to a report from wttw news uh it revealed that no disciplinary actions or retraining for these officers occurred in 2022 61.5 million was spent on lawsuits involving 286 repeat offender officers Repeat offender officers. Um, how ironic is that? How ironic is that? Uh, definitely you can weigh in uh, at the Diamond K show, uh, DJ Diamond K at gmail.com. Now, uh, this is the second annual uh, review by uh, WTTW News, which examined data mandated by a federal consent decree. Uh, now that is something that uh, here in Baltimore, we know all too well a uh, uh, consent decree. So this one uh, required Chicago Police Department to uh, reform its training, reform supervision, and disciplinary process. Uh, that did not happen. Uh, only 6% uh, of the uh, decree's requirements have been met. And of course, they're going to say, oh my God, we haven't had time. Oh, we've been understaffed. We've been we've been overworked. I mean, you know, this is Chicago. How can we do the job? You know, that 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 whole thing uh, what, uh, commonly referred to in the English language as excuses. <laughs> excuses. Um, but, you know, just so many, so many cases. Uh, but if you look at some individuals, the report mentioned officers like David uh, Salgado, uh, Rocco Pruger, who were involved in multiple misconduct cases with high settlement costs, despite a glaring record of 43 misconduct complaints. Pruger remains an active officer. The city's failure to establish an early warning system to flag uh, what uh, I mean, we would have to say are problematic, problematic officers, uh, which is required by the consent decree, uh, has not happened. This should pose a significant concern with the system that is still in its pilot phase, despite recommendations from the University of Chicago's crime lab and support from Illinois Attorney General. Uh, Kwame Rao. So here's an example of a city that is in desperate need of policing, but the police themselves are not up to par. Not up to par. Uh, of course, the job is hard. We know all of that. Uh, but folks in Chicago are a long way from getting the uh, police and uh, uh, the system that they deserve, the system that uh, is required, the system that uh, is supposed to be happening. Um, you know what I mean? It is. Uh, uh, <laughs> it is. Uh, it is very interesting. Um, 
I'm gonna go to Cool Breeze. All right, Cool Breeze says, uh, shaking his head like a crowd, going to keep asking the DJ to play a song, but the DJ knows it will kill the dance floor. Oh my goodness! You know, Cool Breeze. Shout out to shout out to Cool Breeze. I absolutely know what you're talking about. Um, and uh, so when you're in that incident, uh, in <laughs> instance, when you're in that situation where people want to hear something that you know will hurt the party. What do you do? You don't do it. I guess unless uh, unless they uh, are the person that's paying you, maybe, maybe, uh, or you find a way around it. I guess it's possible. Uh, I've been in that situation before. Um, but, uh, you know, sometimes you got to give people what, you know, what they want in order to show them uh, this will kill the party and this is not a good idea. And, and I love that scenario because sometimes people demand something that's going to hurt them. And you know it's gonna hurt them, or or, or give them less than favorable uh, results, you know. And um, uh, Coolbury saying that it's the police union that helped build up these shenanigans. You are absolutely right. They they help build them up. They also will make excuses for it when it goes crazy, when it goes haywire. They're gonna make excuses there for for police unions. Uh, to have some of the ideas and champion some of the things that they do, they have no accountability whatsoever. They will not take responsibility for anything. And if they make a mistake, they're still not going to take accountability for it. They're gonna they're gonna find another way around it. Um, and uh, and I have a lot of uh, uh, friends and family members that are police officers. Uh, but I, I, that's I mean that's just the facts. You know what I mean? That's just the facts. Um, now. Uh, any police officers or, or, or folks from a union that want to come on and talk with me about this, I would love to talk about it. Uh, and, and we can uh, definitely do that. Uh, DJ Diamond K at gmail.com. Uh, Coolbury said that they will help keep the lie alive. They absolutely will. They absolutely will. And I think that's because uh, they're in a position of authority. And sometimes you just, you just, you know, you can just do too much. You can go too far, whereas though you, you can't go back, right? And sometimes they feel like that, but I think that the, that's part of the disconnect. If the police could be a little bit more accountable for actions and missteps, um, I think that that would go a lot you know, by way of mending, helping to start mending the broken relationship between the community and the police department. It, it, it's going to take somebody to kind of, you know what I mean? Uh, what do you say? Be the bigger person, somebody. Uh, and um, definitely uh, the Navy, the U S Navy has dropped education requirements in an attempt to help boost enlistment. Yeah. Trying to boost enlistment. The U.S. Navy is starting to enlist individuals who have not graduated from high school or gotten a GED, mark, marking the second time in about a year that uh, service has opened the door uh, for what they call lower performing recruits as it is struggling to meet their enlistment goals. So. That is where we are. Yeah, Cool Breeze said what? Yes, this this is this is where we are. Now, this new plan, Navy recruits without an education uh, a credential will still be able to join as long as they score high enough on the armed service qualification test. And it ain't that hard. OK, it ain't that hard. Uh, but as long as they can score high enough on that test, um, they, they'll, be, they'll be good. Now, the last time the service took individuals without uh, the education requirement was back in 2000. And, um, you know, so so that's that's where we are. Last fiscal year, which ended on September 30th, the Navy, Army and Air Force all failed to meet their recruitment goals. So in an attempt to uh, get recruitment up in the Navy, they saying, I don't care if you didn't graduate from high school. I don't care if you don't have your GED, you know what I mean? Come on down to the Navy and, uh, 
you know, sign up. Uh, so that that is interesting. That that is uh, is interesting. Um, is that a good idea? I don't know. And just because somebody didn't graduate from from high school, just because they dropped out, and don't have their GED, does that mean that they won't make a good soldier? Uh, not necessarily. But um, it is just interesting. It, it is just interesting. Um, interesting where we are with regards. Uh, to that so the navy saying that you don't need all the education you don't even have to finish high school uh you can just come on in pass pass this test and uh pass the pass the navy test and you are good uh interesting uh dj diamond k at gmail.com now as far as republicans in the house the uh, the GOP in the House, uh, they have released articles of impeachment against the uh, uh, Homeland uh, Security Secretary um, Alejandro Mayorkas, and this is over the border. So um, one thing that Republicans have done is they have convinced people that the border is the biggest problem in America. Now, the reason why they want you to focus on that is because the economy is not as bad as they would like it to be. And you may say, what, what do you mean they want the economy to be bad? Yes, they want the economy to be bad. Uh, Donald Trump will tell you he wants the depression. <laughs> he wants the whole system to crash uh, so he can come in and uh, and try to blame the whole thing on Biden. Uh, the border is something that needs to be addressed. However, Republicans don't seem to actually want to fix it. The thing about the border, the thing about immigration is this is not a new issue. Immigration is something that has plagued this country for many years. And if the folks in D.C. really want to fix the problem of immigration, they would fix it. They don't really want to fix it. They just want to talk about it. They just want to uh, 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 give a lip service to it, but they don't actually want to do something about it. Why do folks want to come to this country? Folks want to come to this country because of economic opportunity, right? There are businesses here in this country that will hire them to do work. So therefore, they are coming here to do work, make money, send it back home, bring over some more folks. And you know what I mean? That's what you want to do. If the businesses, now I'm talking about these big businesses. If these big businesses were not hiring immigrants, illegal, you know, illegal immigrants, we'll say that. If they were not hiring illegal immigrants, then they would not be coming. So you have these big corporations who if ICE rolled through there, half the workforce would be <laughs> deported. Those are the places that you need to target. Until you, until you address the real uh, 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 magnet to bring illegal immigrants to this country, everything else is just talking trash. Uh, everything else is just talking trash. And big business that we're talking about, they control the politicians. The people and the co corporations that are employing illegal immigrants control the politicians, right? So they control the politicians. So the politicians are not going to really address the real reason or, or, or the real cause or really end it. You know why? Because they can't because they will lose their funding. They will lose their money. The ones that control them, what they call the dark money. That is done by, by the very people who are controlling the politicians. So all this, all we are in is in a quagmire. We're supposed to just saying stuff and just talking. You did it. You did it. Let's fix it. Let's fix it. You know, I want to fix it. You fix it. You know, and nothing happens, right? And, and, that's, and that's where we are, right? So we keep sending these folks to D.C. who are literally and figuratively puppets. They can't do anything won't do anything, right? Sort of like Diddy. Y'all remember him, right? 
<laughs> Diddy. They, they like can't stop, won't stop, right? They ain't gonna stop. They can't stop. They just run in their mouth. They they're just running their mouth. Um, let's see what Cool Breeze is saying. Cool Breeze said, uh, and this is about the last topic, uh, that they're just trying to enlist to meet numbers that and that's right. Um, talking about the Navy, uh, the enlistors will go um hand with training because enlisters not nah, able to handle the stress mentally. You're right, you're right. That that is that is absolutely right. Um and, and Cool Breeze is just saying that this is just a numbers game. Um and uh, also talking about uh the agenda uh both Republicans and Democrats in Congress will steal loopholes from us, the taxpayers, uh, for <laughs> absolutely, absolutely. Uh, uh, cool Breeze is just saying that it doesn't matter. Democrats uh, or Republicans, they are just trying to get over on the people um, and talking about uh, the very people that they hire. Um, it's it's absolutely right. Uh, so so we're talking about um, and uh, oh, on Instagram we're saying that uh, talking about lobbyists and it it is it is it's a whole it's a money thing right it is just a it is just a money thing and and that's where we are with that so they want folks to focus on the border right and immigration can be stopped like that they're coming here for jobs and if you cut that off or or you make it more uh, uh, stringent to, to hire folks, then they'll stop coming here and go somewhere else. Or they'll take the proper steps to get hired um, and, and, and take the proper steps to get inside. Uh, but if you have, uh, you know, illegal immigrants working somewhere, right? And they get, they pass word back to their family. Look, you can come here, work at whatever it's called, right? Corporation, whatever. And you just come over here you know, you don't have to get your papers. You don't have to do nothing. You just get over here, and they got folks just coming over, right? And that's what's happening. Uh, you end that. You you target these corporations. Now these are these are big money corporations. These are big places with with a lot of money, billions and billions of dollars. If they were targeted, then this would stop. But of course, uh, that's not going to happen. So I don't know where where we are with regards to that, uh, and where where we can. Uh, can go when you have politicians controlled by the various corporations uh, that are um, the biggest <laughs> the, the biggest contributors uh, uh, to uh, the illegal immigration that uh, America is currently facing. Um, so you know, I had to get to a little bit of um uh, uh foolishness, right? Uh, you know, got gotta have a little bit of foolishness. Uh, Chris, Krishan Rock, right? I like her actually, right? But uh, she has tattooed Blueface's face on her face, right? Uh, uh th this young lady, she's 20, 23 years old, and she's she's a pretty girl not sure why she did it uh and I, I and i'm pretty sure she is going to regret this one day uh in the very near future because this guy blueface is whenever he gets out of jail he's gonna be back to the same old you know what i mean craziness and uh but i i just i, I love tattoos right I, I have a, a gang of tattoos and uh, I think the tattoos on uh, on folks when when it's done right looks good. But this one, this, this one is is beyond me. I, I saw this and I was hoping that she was joking. But even if she had stopped at the outline, but she got it colored in, she's got shading. Oh, she is going to be so angry with herself. Uh, and even even extensive laser removal, this is still going to be a problem for her. Uh, one day, one day, and it's not going to be that far. It's not going to be that far away. She is going to be so sad that she did this. Uh, but, you know, she she did it. Maybe some makeup. What do you call it? A foundation or something. Uh, but she's got she's got that dude's. Uh, name, no, face tattooed on her. You remember? Wasn't that long ago? They were, you know, fighting in the street, knocking each other out, and 
swinging on each other and all that. And, uh, and she has that. She was locked up. Do you think that he would tattoo? He wouldn't even tattoo her face on his arm. And she didn't put it on uh, on her face. Her, her Literally uh, put it on her face. Wow. That is, uh, I, you know, and, and some folks are saying that that's love. And that is, um, uh, that she's, she's a real one and, and she's, she's down. She's, she's something. She's something. I'm not, I'm not sure exactly what, uh, but she is definitely something. Speaking of something, E. Jean Carroll, uh, she was awarded 83 million, uh, from former president Donald Trump. And, uh, she's starting to make the rounds. She is going to be, uh, you know, out smiling, talking, talking the uh, the victory speech because she's been awarded uh, this from this jury, eighty three million. Uh, former President Trump uh, repeatedly has defamed her in statements. Uh, she is a columnist, and she told uh, George Stephanopoulos that she plans to use the money on something that Trump hates. Um, not sure what that is. A lot of folks are saying Trump's not going to pay the money. How are they going to make Trump pay the money? What is going to happen? You know, he needs to pay the money. Some people don't think she's going to get any money. But I'm telling you that um, she is going to get some money. He's trying to appeal this, and when that happens, he's going to have to put down some money. They're going to have to uh, you know, put it in, you know, like a, like a, the court is going to get access to it. Uh, so he's going to have to get this money. Does he have this money liquid? I'm going to say no. Uh, he's going to try to get some bank or, or some private investor or somebody to put up this money so he can uh, try to appeal this. But here's the thing. He's going to lose in an appeal. He's going to lose, right? Why do I say that? I say that he's going to lose. A jury has determined that he was liable for sexual assault. I don't know why the so-called law and order party, the Republicans, have just turned a blind eye to sexual assault. I say that they turned a blind eye to sexual assault because Donald Trump is their standard bearer. Donald Trump is the one that they're saying that they want to be in office, uh, but he has been convicted by a jury, right? Don't 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 fall for the foolishness of uh, Joe Biden did it, or it's a it's a Obama judge or some foolishness. This is a judge of his peer, a, a jury of his peers, that found him guilty, right? of sexual assault, right? In Baltimore, y'all threw <laughs> Catherine Pugh in jail over some books, right? This Bama Trump took his grubby fingers and inserted them uh, 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 unwelcomingly in this lady, uh, E. Jean Carroll, back in the day. And... I just it is it is amazing that the so-called party of law and order thinks that it's okay that someone has this kind of accusation. Right? They got Sheila Dixon up out of office here in Baltimore over some gift cards, probably less than two hundred dollars worth of gift cards that she gave to some of her staff or something, uh uh probably as gifts. She probably gave them as gifts, uh being you know, they're sitting around the office here. Take these cards, right? They got her up out of there for that. Donald Trump has 91 indictments, right? 91. This ain't this ain't even one of those indictments. This is some other stuff. Uh, but this is the so-called law and order uh, uh, party that is supporting him. Uh, cool Breeze says that he's going to take funds from the wall Texas was building. Um, and uh yeah that that is uh is something else uh Kubri says that in the passion pocket his nasty face <laughs> yeah yeah definitely uh, uh Donald Trump's uh, a grubby disgusting fingers 
um, uh, this lady. It, it, it is crazy. Um, and, and so, so we have it, uh, 83 million. Is he going to, uh, he's going to have a lot of judgments against him. He has another judgment that's coming down, uh, in the, uh, the, the Trump organization case at the, in New York. Also, that's going to be coming down. That's going to be, uh, a, a large amount of money that he's going to have to pay out. Uh, it just looks really, really crazy, uh, out there. It looks really, really crazy. Um, so uh, Republicans going forward with with Trump. And here's the thing about Trump: the so-called uh, people that were trying to um, go against him for the Republican nomination those those folks, the the ones that never did or said any any cross words about him, uh, they are part of the problem. The Republican infrastructure is part of the problem. Uh, Republican uh, that support Donald Trump part of the problem. And here's the thing. Here's here's the thing that's really going to upset y'all. He can't and is not going to win. He's not going to win. Elections are a game of addition, not subtraction. And all Donald Trump does is subtract from people that would vote for him. He turns people off. So, yes, so the people who are real excited about him, if they get, all right, we're really excited about him now. Okay, that's not going to make more people vote for you in a general election. And uh, uh, the media, the mainstream media that says all these indictments just mean that he has more momentum and makes him stronger. No, it doesn't. No, it doesn't. It it makes him, uh, I, I guess, the folks that are, Mega fans, they become super mega fans, but it doesn't make more of them. It's just the same old people yelling in the corner, the same old ones that went to the Capitol and some of their homies and all that kind of stuff. But it's not more people. It's the same ones that supported him back in the day. It's just now less of them. Now it's just less. Uh, but he is once again convinced uh, Republicans, which is so stupid. Look at his track record. But whatever. I mean, you know, it's all good. If Trump was not running, uh, then Biden uh, would be retired. But sadly, uh, the only person that Biden can beat is Trump. And uh, if Trump wasn't running, then Biden would have gone home. But, you know, it is what it is. Uh, uh, speaking of Biden, uh, the, you know, first of its kind campaign fundraiser is in the works uh, with Bill Clinton. Uh, uh, Barack Obama and Joe Biden. So the campaign is trying to organize this this uh, fundraiser that officials hope is going to be lucrative and headline grabbing. Now, what are they trying to do? They're trying to energize the uh, Democrats and get their voters excited. Now, uh, so far, they have not been excited about Joe Biden. Let me tell you why. Biden's boring. He's not exciting. He doesn't speak well. And this is the thing. The young Biden didn't speak well. So the old Biden, he's even worse than the young Biden, right? He doesn't speak well. He's not exciting. He, uh, uh, President uh, Barack Obama and Bill Clinton, they were both uh, and uh, dynamic speakers. They got people amped up, people excited. Biden bores everybody. Biden boards everybody, so they're trying to bring in uh, some of the greatest hits, and hopefully they can get people excited. Uh, the uh, 2024 ticket is, um, as uh, as uh, some of my Swedish friends would say, is a boring, right? It, it is very boring, and uh, Bill Clinton and uh, President Obama uh, plan to work with allies to get this party an all hands on deck approach to uh, help him get a second term. It is also uh, as we continue to move forward, I guess we are 10 months away. Uh, this is going to start picking up, picking up steam. You're going to see Democratic leaders, uh, folks from the Biden campaign, all gearing up for a general election that uh, they view has some high stakes. One thing that they used to do in uh, in wrestling, WCW, back in the day, right? 
uh, they would say, this is the single biggest a uh, show ever, right? They would do that over and over and over again. And by the time you got midway through the show, you say, this ain't the single biggest show ever. This is just a regular old show. For so many years, for so many election cycles, folks have said, this is the biggest election ever. This is the biggest election ever. And uh, this, this is probably the biggest election ever. If it ain't the biggest, it's the second biggest, right? Uh, it's super important uh, for you to get involved, for you to vote, for you to participate in this process. Um, now, everybody's not going to do it because everybody doesn't believe that it affects them. Everybody does not want to join in the voting process. I don't care who you vote for, right? But you need to vote. Now, if you want the country to go a certain way, then you'll vote for Trump. Right. And if you want the country to continue to grow, then you're going to vote for Biden. Really simple like that. Uh, but we're going to talk about this a lot more as time continues to uh, uh, progress and uh, we skate towards the general election. Uh, this is an interesting story here. Um, an ex IRS contractor was sentenced to five years for leaking tax documents belonging to Donald Trump and other wealthy Americans. Uh, very, very interesting here. So he has been sentenced to five years in prison and ordered to pay a fine of $5,000. This contractor pleaded guilty to leaking documents to media outlets in 2019 and 2020. So that was, uh, how do you say, dumb? Uh, why did he do that? For money. Uh, and he's paying out $5,000 and losing uh, <laughs> five years. Uh, was it worth it? I guess it depends on how much money uh, they were paid. This uh, ex-IRS, uh, you know, person. Uh, very, very, um, very interesting there. I, I think it was dumb move, though. I think it was a, a real dumb move. Uh, it's the Diamond K Show, of course. Uh, Radio on Fire TV on Fire TV dot com. Of course, on YouTube, DJ Diamond K. So, a couple more stories before we get out of here. The uh, enemy drone that hit the U.S. base in Jordan, killing three service members, uh, possibly confused with an American drone. Uh, if you haven't heard, um, it is just a, 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 a sad situation here. You have a drone hit the barracks, right? This is the place where the, the, the soldiers are asleep. This is, um, you know, just a just a sad situation because when stuff like this happens, America responds. And when they do this, this means uh, war. This is uh this is not good. This is this is not good at all. Um these deaths are are going to just spark things up. Spark the US involvement in that region up. Um this is the first in the line of uh fire American troops uh since the start of the uh Israel Hamas war. Um not happy about this at all of course you have the loss of life uh but this is taking us in a direction that is not not going to be good uh because they're not going to telegraph what they're going to do uh but it's very easy to uh predict it folks are going to be killed they're going to they're going to send some drones over somewhere else it's going to uh really increase our involvement the pentagon has announced the names of the uh, soldiers. They are three army re uh, reservists that were killed in this drone attack over the weekend at the U.S. base in Jordan near the border with Syria. And uh, Sergeant William Jerome Rivers and um, SPC Kennedy LaDon Sanders 
and SPC Brianna Morfitt were killed on Sunday uh, when a one-way unmanned aerial system, a drone, hit their housing units while they were sleeping. Uh, This incident is still under investigation, uh, but you know how this goes. You've been around long enough. You know how this goes, Uh, but the Pentagon has identified uh, the three U.S. service members killed in this attack, um, and they are all black Americans and uh, definitely um, sad to uh, to hear this uh, information. And uh, we're definitely uh, praying for their families and uh, friends uh, after this uh, attack and, uh, and and the loss of life. Um, but like I said, you can expect for activity, U.S. activity in this region to increase. They're not going to take this line down. Uh, the uh, uh, powers that be in America are not going to take this line down. Uh, so that that is just where we are with that. Let, let me know your thoughts in the comment section, of course. Instagram, uh, Facebook, Twitter, LinkedIn, TikTok, at the Diamond K Show, of course. Uh, DJ Diamond K at gmail.com. And a uh, couple more stories before we get out of here. Uh, Obamacare signups have surged to over 20 million Americans. Uh, the Biden administration announced this record breaking enrollment. Uh, This is health insurance through the Obamacare marketplace. This uh, reflects 25% uh, of an increase, and uh, they are emphasizing the efforts to expand access and affordability. Uh, So this is a good thing. The president is trying to make uh, lower health care premiums a permanent feature. Uh, They have not achieved that as of yet. Uh, but they are highlighting the uh, Democratic initiatives, including tax breaks to provide cost effective plans. Uh, so that is a good thing. Now, despite uh, challenges like uh, Medicaid removals and Republican opposition, the administration's aggressive outreach and extended enrollment options have uh, offered opportunities to mitigate disruptions in coverage for vulnerable populations. Uh, So the Biden administration with another thing that they can tout, another thing that they can do to uh, boost things up. Speaking of boosting things up, we've been talking about Donald Trump. uh, And according to reports, allies close to uh, the disgraced, twice impeached former president are urging him to select a woman or a black man as his running mate. Uh, Maybe he'll select a woman. I don't see him selecting a black man. Uh, That would be a big surprise to me. Anyway, uh, the allies of Donald Trump, according to reports, are trying to get him to consider selecting a lady. What, you want somebody that he can uh, potentially sexually assault? What is he? Why would you want to do something like that? Anyway, uh, the thought process here is that uh, the selection could better, uh, you know, bolster his appeal among black people and women uh, in this potential rematch with Joe Biden. Uh, Trump is going to select somebody who is meek, like uh, uh, Mike Pence, somebody like that. Uh, Of course, you see uh, Tim Scott auditioning. Uh, to be Donald Trump's floor mat. You see um, Vivek Ramaswamy auditioning to be the floor mat. Uh, you know, there, there are others out there. Um, uh, so I, I I don't know who he's going to select. I don't think it's going to be any of the um, the people that, that are uh, currently in the forefront. I, I would be surprised. Uh, Trump's going to select somebody who's definitely not going to outshine him uh, with regards to charisma and uh and things like that but either way it's going to be trump and some whoever uh against biden um and vp harris uh uh very very interesting um you know the more things change 
uh, the more they say stay the same. Let me know your thoughts, of course, in the comment section, Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, LinkedIn, TikTok, at The Diamond K Show. Um, of course, on um, YouTube, I am DJ Diamond K. And um, hit me up, radioonfire.tv, onfire-tv.com. I am here weekdays uh, at 6 p.m. And, of course, you can always check us out on demand. Uh, on the weekends, I am in the mix uh, right here. So, so th this weekend, what are we doing? Are we doing Baltimore Club? I think we're going to do Baltimore Club. I think so. Yeah. So that, that's going to be Saturday, 12 noon. Uh, right here so however you are checking out our feed many places on x i am uh, at the diamond k show however you're checking us out uh do that but this weekend i'll be in the mix 12 noon baltimore club uh dj diamond k at gmail.com uh you want to send some music in and all that good stuff other than that i will uh check you guys out tomorrow looking for food that feeds your soul Hoodfellas Bistro and Catering is your local African-American-owned restaurant offering American cuisine. Located across from the courthouse, we offer daily jury specials to reward civic duty. Enjoy our full-service restaurant and fully stocked bar. Dine in, pick up, delivery, and catering. Our themed happy hours feature live music, handcrafted drinks, and weekly specials. Book your private event at hoodfellowsbistrocatering.com.